Good evening and welcome to Current Issues. I'm your host, Hisham Tilawi. Happy New Year to everyone out there. This is the uh, first show that we have in this uh, new year, 2007. And uh, this is the first time we come to you on Tuesday and uh, this good time, 6.30 p.m., which is considered to be the primest of prime time. And uh, we uh, like to welcome all our new viewers. I know when we switched the, uh, to Tuesday, we uh, have picked up a lot of people who normally did not watch the show. So welcome. Welcome to the truth. This is the only program you need to listen to if you want to know what's going on in the world and what we are doing in the world. Saddam Hussein is dead. I'm sure most of you know that. I don't know how you feel about it. But tonight, we are going to bring you and make the picture much clearer to you of why Saddam Hussein is dead. He was hanged. He was hanged Saturday morning for a crime that supposedly he committed. And we will talk about that. Why Saddam Hussein died, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as you know, when we went to war against Iraq, our government told us that we are going there because Saddam has something to do with 9-11. And then they told us that Saddam has weapons of mass destruction. And then we found out that they lied to us, that Saddam did not mean us any harm, and Saddam did not have weapons of mass destruction and Saddam was not a threat at all to this country. But Saddam has done something. Of course in the 80s Saddam was our boy because we had asked him to go and start a war with Iran to protect our oil that mysteriously went under the Arab's sand so we wanted to protect it from the Iranian Revolution, and that's when we sent Donald Drumsfield, like you see him, on the screen, to make deals with Saddam, and they did make deals with Saddam. But Saddam resisted, and Saddam had to die because he resisted. I guess it's a lesson for all of those who resist unless they are ready to resist. And that's probably why Saddam had to pay the price, because he was not ready to resist the United States of America. But he did. And that's why he lost his two sons, and that's why at the end he lost his life. But Saddam had to go. His regime had to go. Why did his regime have to go? If Saddam did not have anything to do with 9-11 and if Saddam did not have weapons of mass destruction. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have assembled six different people who will talk about Saddam Hussein. In the first hour, we will have Israel Shamir. We'll also have um, Larissa Alexandro or Alexander Rovna. And then we will have Dr. Ashraf Abbasi. But before we go to that, let's go ahead and see why Saddam had to go. This goes back all the way to early 80s, actually probably about late 70s. The Israeli Mossad has prepared a policy paper at that time. It was leaked and it was translated in 1982 by Israel Shahak, an Israeli professor who felt that he had to translate this document. Israel Shahak was an anti-Zionist uh, uh, Israeli Jew. In that paper, ladies and gentlemen, this is way back in 1982 when it was published, so you know 
that before it was published probably had been in the works for a few years before that. But in 1982 it was published. And in that paper it said, all the Arab, now remember Israel was created back in 1948 in the middle of all these Arab countries there. European Jews went to Palestine in 1948, well actually they went there before, but in 1948 they established their country or a state, a Jewish state. That's why they have the Star of David on the flag because they wanted to be a Jewish only state. That's when they kicked out a lot of the uh, Palestinians who have been living there for thousands of years. But they said and they're determined that the Arab countries are their enemies so they have to destroy these Arab countries. And they found faults, fault lines in, in every Arab country. And this is what they said back in 1982. They said, all, now we're telling you all this. There's three documents that I'm going to go, I'm going to tell you about briefly, and you can go on the internet and look them up. But this is why Saddam died last Saturday. It started way back. All the Arab states east of Israel. Now, the, this particular document, the title of it is Strategy for Israel in the 1980s. Strategy for Israel in the 1980s. All Arab states east of Israel are torn apart, broken up and riddled with inner conflict, even more than those of the Maghreb. Syria is fundamentally no different from Lebanon, except in the strong military regime which rules it. But the real civil war taking place nowadays, remember this was in 1982, uh, the civil war taking place nowadays between the Sunni majority and the Shiite Alawi ruling minority is talking about Syria, which is only 12% of the population, testifies to the severity of the domestic trouble. Now remember in 1982, uh, there was some problems in Syria where um, uh, about 20-25 thousand people died like within a week or 10 days uh, in the uh, Homs and Hama area. That's the first document, which is basically these Arab countries have faults within them. I mean, what countries does not have faults within it? Do you think here we can't, if we need to find faults and, and, and work on those faults, we can. Don't you think we can create a problem between blacks and whites? Don't you think we can create a problem which is probably coming soon between Hispanics and whites? Don't you think we can create a, you know, anyone with a little bit of difference you can feed on those differences or feed these differences and create a problem for everyone. Uh, start a, 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 a hateful cycle going on, a hatred cycle going on. So they decided they need to break up these Arab countries and they knew exactly where to go and what to do. In 1996, a policy paper called a clean break, a new strategy for securing the realm. It's a strategy that was written, it's a paper that was written by Richard Pearl, Douglas Fife, and others who are basically Jewish Zionists. They tried to get uh, President Clinton to go along with it, and in that paper they said, Israel can shape its strategies, its strategic environment in cooperation with Turkey and Jordan by weakening, containing, and even rolling back Syria. They have said that getting rid of Saddam Hussein is an Israeli objective in its own right. So they had to get rid of Saddam Hussein. President Clinton did not go for it because they tried to get him to go for it and attack Iran and destroy that regime, but he did not go for it. The third of all these uh, strategies is the, the strategy which is the, uh, uh, the new American century and uh, that strategy or that paper was presented to President, he wasn't even president then, George Bush in 2000 and his brother Jeb Bush was sitting as a matter of fact on the preparation of these um, of these documents and in that document 
it basically said that we need to go and destroy Iraq, take control of Iraq, and take control of the Middle East. With these three documents, ladies and gentlemen, you see that the preparation from Israel to destroy Iraq and other Arab countries has been planned for a long time. Saddam Hussein resisted and Saddam Hussein had to go. That's basically why. With these three documents, ladies and gentlemen, you will see why we had to go and destroy Iraq. Not for us, not because it benefited us, but because it benefited Israel and because this was an Israeli strategic objective to get rid of Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein, ladies and gentlemen, had to die on a charge that he had killed, not him by, uh, 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 by himself, but he, that he supposedly gave the okay to kill some Shiites in the Dajjal town where an assassination attempt on his life during the Iran-Iraq war where some of these people who were arrested were actually and, and, and actually they, uh, they said that they were Iranian operatives this is in the midst of the Iran-Iraq war a trial was held about that time and 148 people were condemned to death but Saddam Hussein was involved in a lot of other atrocities as most regimes are the biggest atrocity in the history of the world is probably the atrocity that we are committing right now in Iraq where 650,000 Iraqis have lost their lives our official records of 3,000 Americans have lost their lives but Saddam Hussein has a lot to say ladies and gentlemen Saddam Hussein still another trial and another charge was in the middle of the court systems there which is which is referred to as the unfal so it's like in the middle of, of a court case they kill the man there's so much to say about this I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on say, on, on going uh, on talking about this but the questions that uh, you might ask don't you think that if we kept this man alive there's so much that we can learn from him exactly what happened exactly why did he go to Kuwait and occupy Kuwait exactly what was going on between uh, 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 with the war on Iran back in the 1980s exactly what is uh, uh, going on with the negotiations with the United States did this man have some to say that the United States could not wait had to kill him and then why do we have to give them to the Shiites, the Muqtada Sadr, gangs, killers, killer squads, or killing squads, who actually killed him? If we're looking for stability, ladies and gentlemen, that's not a way to have stability in Iraq. Because what we are actually telling these people is we want you to go to war against each other and kill each other. That's what Israel wants. It's not on our benefit, but we are, or our interest as Americans. But that's exactly what we have done. We gave Saddam Hussein to people who hate him because they're different. They have a different, a different faith than him. And then they kill him on the most probably important holiday for Muslims. If they did not mean to instigate and then they filmed it and after they filmed it they put it up on the internet right away. Where you can see it was mainly thugs who have committed the execution but the point here is they killed Saddam so he won't have to say what they don't want him to say second have these thugs kill him so you can fuel the ongoing war and if there's any chance of reconciliations between the Sunnis and the Shiites 
that will be out of the door. And that's exactly what they have done. That's exactly what our government has done. And the whole world has to suffer for that. I understand we, we have the uh, guest with us. Let me see. Uh, Israel, can you hear me? I can't hear him. Yes, I hear you, yes. Yes, very good. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us. I know it's too early um, in the morning uh, in Europe. Uh, Israel Shamir, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, is joining us uh, to speak about the uh, execution of uh, Saddam Hussein. Uh, of course, Israel Shamir can be uh, uh, contacted, or you can see IsraelShamirs.com, uh, www.IsraelShamirs.com. Uh, he is an excellent author, an excellent journalist. He is an Israeli, uh, born as a Jew, but I believe he did uh, convert. And, uh, but that's not what we, uh, we had uh, Israel Shamir with us uh, before and we talked about uh, uh, his, uh, 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 his personal life and what happened. But we're going to uh, briefly talk to Israel Shamir about the, uh, the, I almost said the assassination of Saddam Hussein, but it's the execution of Saddam Hussein, which probably could be uh, considered as an assassination. Uh, wouldn't you think so, Israel? Yes, absolutely. I also think as I wrote about it, that in a way uh, Saddam Hussein was now assassinated in the same very way as so many Palestinian uh, leaders were assassinated. And uh, that, is that is obviously a tragedy that uh, um, political figures, that the leaders, princes, are being uh, killed. Uh, that is obviously a tragic, tragic story. Okay. Uh, so tell me, uh, Israel, what do you think of um, his execution? Well, you know, uh, all, all this war obviously was a, a terrible disgrace. Uh, we, we kind of got used already to think that we live in the world where aggression is not an event that uh, is approved of. But the United States, the United States attacked uh, Iraq. Uh, made an act of aggression, took over the country, uh, uh, got hold of the president, and killed him. So uh, that is uh, something that is uh, so barbaric that we are uh, just not. It's uh, for Europeans nowadays. It's e even difficult to try to understand. Uh, that's not something that um, is being done for the last hundred of years. What do you think, Israel? Uh, what, what, what? I mean. Why do you think the United States went over there, destroyed the country, and then killed the president of that country? Well, they tried uh, probably to put uh, God's fear into everybody else, uh, so that uh, all the leaders of the uh, third world would understand that they have no immunity at all, that they will, can be found, that they can be killed, they can be uh, executed publicly uh, if they don't obey uh, the United States. That is uh, how I read it. And, uh, in a way, that is one of the big acts of terror. Now, putting uh, terror into leaders and rulers of all the countries. Now, some people might say that a court of justice has found him guilty of murder, and that's why he was executed. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, it's quite impossible to accept such a thing. There was no court of justice, so that, that was a travesty of justice. The decision to kill him was taken in Washington, and uh, the, they had uh, some kind of um, few people on the ground which uh, agreed to play, uh, to participate in this comedy. That, is, that was just a technicality. Uh, let us uh, not uh, to try not to cheat ourselves or anybody else. He was killed uh, by the decision of Washington, by the decision of the American administration, and if there were some uh, Iraqis who participated in the secondary roles, the decision was still, uh, the buck stopped in the White House. Um, uh, Israel, uh, there's no doubt that the people who uh, executed Saddam were pro Shiites and especially pro Muqtada al-Sadr uh, Shiites, because those who have heard the uh, the tape uh, have seen and heard the chanting and also the prayer 
that uh, they have recited uh, is not is more of an, 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 an Iranian actually more Iranians prayed in that particular the, the way they prayed uh, how do you read where the Americans would turn him over to Muqtada Sadr people who are very closely aligned with Iran what do you read in that message you know, I disagree completely with um, this reading of the thing. It's not that Americans turned him over to somebody. Americans killed him, and even if they used uh, this or other particular Iraqis to do the job, let us not try to push the guilt on somebody else. It was done, it's, it was pure American job. And it doesn't matter that they found few hooligans on the ground who did the job uh, physically. The decision was all American. Now, uh, the second thing, uh, we don't really know anything about this um, uh, about, uh, thing. Uh, I, will, I also saw the tape and I, saw, I read what people say about that. But I think there is no reason to jump to such a conclusion. Uh, now, uh, there are very strong forces, uh, let's say, uh, American and not only American forces, who try to promote a new war between uh, Sunni and Shia in the Middle East. Now, we have had such a war for hundreds of years. And when I saw those reports about uh, the Shia forces, Shia who killed him, I thought that is another provocation, another attempt to create a civil war between uh, Sunni and Shia, something we can do perfectly well without. So, you know, I would say on this stage, really what we... Uh, uh, so, and what we've been told, it could be very well be another another provocation. So, uh, you think that the Americans, I mean, they control the whole country, so they could have kept Saddam uh, with them at least for another day, uh, so these uh, people who executed him would not execute him on the first day of Eid al-Adha, which is the most important holiday uh, for Muslims. Uh, what, what do you, what, I mean, could the Americans have killed Saddam uh, for another day? Well, Americans killed Saddam. Um, um, I think you, you shouldn't try to think that this technical uh, technicality that there were some uh, Iraqis who actually did the job, that in one second it releases actually uh, America from the overall responsibility. Americans could keep Saddam for another day, for another year, for another hundred years, as long as he is alive. America is the ruler over there. I mean, the Iraq is occupied by, by the United States forces. So the question they could or could not is really absolutely out of question. And they don't see any proof at all that uh, there is some local force that was guilty of, uh, murder, of murdering Saddam Hussein. Because uh, all those insinuations that he was killed by Shias are actually not supported by Shias. I don't see any Shia group that said, you know, well, we did it. So it, it, it could be not only a murder, but also a provocation. So, so the decision to do it Saturday at uh, Eid al-Adha day, that was an American decision in your view? In my view, absolutely. Not only, uh, that was absolutely an American decision. And also, uh, all this uh, insinuation that it was done by Shias, I think it's also another part of the American plan to uh, create a civil war in the Middle East. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Israel, this interview, I just wanted you to come on and talk for a few minutes because I have a lot of people and in the near future I will bring you on for a whole hour to discuss more. Uh, no, sh a, short, a short chance to talk to you and to the listeners is perfectly sufficient. It's quite unnecessary to do very long. It's always much, much better f for both of us and for the listeners when they have a chance to listen to another point of view. Yes, definitely. It's not making it over long. So thank you very much uh, and uh, thank you, the listeners. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming uh, on the program, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, 
You know, while we wait for the next uh, guest, which is uh, Larissa Alexandrovna. Uh, uh, Larissa is a journalist, essayist, and poet. She is currently managing news editor for Raw Story and contributes regularly to other publications in the alternative press. She also uh, writes uh, a lot at, uh, at largely, at largely.com. So uh, while we wait for her, I'm gonna go ahead and take Freedom. Uh, go ahead, Freedom. Go ahead, you're on. Uh, Dr. Talawi, I'm in a quagmire right here because I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, the guys who put Saddam to death, they kind of look like these same guys who was behind Daniel Pearl. If you look at their size, you know what I mean? Right. These people are not thin, tall Arabs. These people are kind of stocky. I mean, look, look at your, your film again. They, they kind of stocky like the dudes that and, were behind Daniel Pearl when they beheaded and I, him. And, I uh, what? and something else I want to ask you. Sure. Uh, it, why would they try Saddam for do jail uh, when he killed the Shiites there, about 148 of them? Right. And they didn't allow uh, the him Kurds. to be tried for uh, for the massacre of the Kurds. And, and Halabja, yes. You know, the irony... Magical and chemical weapons he used yeah. against the Iraqi soldiers. I mean, why didn't they allow those war crimes and yeah. humanitarian crimes to be... Well, because because they did not want Saddam to talk. To talk about what meeting with Donald Rumsfeld in 1983? Yeah, there's, what? there's a lot. I mean, that's one picture. I mean, there's a lot of behind the scene. You know, before Donald Rumsfeld entered the scene, there was a lot of behind the scene negotiations and agreement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, you know, he was in the middle because they started the other uh, court proceedings, the other for the other charge, which is the uh, the Anfal. They call it Anfal. Right. They started that. And uh, in the middle of this court proceedings, they uh, hanged the man. Well, he also... You know, you know, we have a lot of issues besides that. This is a man who controlled the country for, for, for like 20 or 30 years. This is a man who has a lot to say about why he went to war against Iran, why he went to war, uh, why he occupied Kuwait, uh, what is happening, what happened in negotiations between him and the, and the United States, why did it break down? This man has a lot to say. But, but you see, everybody knows that he occupied Kuwait because of the fact uh, April Glassby told him nothing would be done, that he could go into Kuwait. I mean, Remember that? Definitely, definitely. Everything, you know, the way, I'm, ambassador. the way I'm seeing this is somebody is writing the script and what we witnessed few days ago with the hanging of Saddam is this is one of the, I guess, the biggest scene in this script. This is going to be the biggest scene probably for uh, in the next century, the hanging of Saddam Hussein. But the Iranian, the, the Iraqi constitution, Dr. Talawi... It's illegal to hang him on that day, yes. But the, the Iraqi constitution was written by our provisional government. You, you remember that? Paul Bremer now, and, and, now, and our now, provisional government now, wrote uh, okay. the Iraqi constitution. If you want to go that far, if you want to go that far, the whole government is illegal. Our occupation of that country is illegal. The court, how can you try somebody, and it's against international law for an occupation country to try someone who is occupied, and this is a man that was taken prisoner. You cannot have a civil court that you set up, you set up the judges and you fire them if you, if you, if you, if you are following uh, the, the court proceedings. They, they have, they fired, because the United States wanted him to be fired, a judge who was seen to be lenient. That's right, and they also Saddam. killed Saddam attorneys, a couple of attorneys. And they killed three of his attorneys. That's right. So, so this, this trial in no mean was a trial, it was a mock trial. We have done it. it. This whole thing is illegal. Now, we're not saying that Saddam should not die for his crimes, but what we're saying is try him, make sure that you have independent uh, 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 court systems, and try him. But and the thing that, that get me, Dr. Talawi, if you've been interrupting is... Guilty, if he's found guilty by an independent court of law, then let it be. Let, you know, whatever uh, the, the laws of that country. But we have set up that, uh, that government. We have set up that court. We were playing with the judges the way we wanted. And we decided he's going uh, to die. And we decided he's going to die on that day. Now, may I ask you one other question? Today sure. on the news, I heard that they were looking for... $57 billion that Saddam Hussein skirted out of Iraq. Now, 
Why would they kill him without asking him where did he put the fifty-seven billion dollars? I mean, now, there's yeah. so many things wrong about yeah. this whole do thing. You really, do you really believe that Saddam could hide fifty-seven, 57 billion? Fifty-seven billion. That's right. And we will not know where they at. Somebody but. knows where they at, and believe me, if he had hit him fifty-seven billion dollars, I'm sure we know where it's at. But. You know, forget about the money. Why do we kill him when he has a lot to say? And that's probably why we killed him, because he had a lot to say. Freedom, thanks for the call. Thank you. All right, I believe I uh, have Larissa with us. Larissa, can you hear me? Larissa? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, very good. Thank you. Thanks for joining the uh, program. Uh, 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 Lisa Alexander Rovna, uh, you know what? I, I knew I was going to mess it up, and I, and I think I did. Um, is a journalist? No, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. It's, uh, Alexandrovna. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, she's currently managing news editor for uh, Raw Story. And by the way, Raw Story is one of the places, ladies and gentlemen, you want to go. I always tell you to go to the Internet. And I'm telling you, if you want to know the truth of what's going on in the world, this is one of the sites that you want to go and follow uh, Larissa's articles. Uh, like I told you, turn your CNN and Fox and all the networks off because they give you nothing but lies and garbage. We bring you people who are going to tell you the truth. And once we know they're lying, we won't bring them to you again. Larissa, um, th again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, tell me something. Uh, why did we have to kill Saddam? Well, I mean, I think there's uh, plenty of reasons uh, why this happened, uh, but I think, you know, my, my theory right now is, uh, you know, I've been reporting on our uh, building up toward Iran for the last couple of years now, and uh, in my opinion, what I see is um, a reason to justify uh, a, a troop surge into the region. Uh, because there's going to be uh, a massive fallout from the execution, and then we can justify uh, sending in more troops. Can you hear me? Uh, do you think, now I had Israel yeah. Samir uh, before you, and he thinks that it was an American decision to kill Saddam, not an Iraqi decision. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, did you hear the question? No, I, I don't. I think I don't think we know, and that's the problem. I think had this been done differently, then we wouldn't have had this question. But because of the way it was done, it is absolutely impossible at this point, anyway, to determine who actually had control of the situation. Uh, we know that the first that there was planning involved uh, by Iraqis, but we also know that one of them, at least one of them, was an, uh, a U.S. citizen. Um, you know, again, it's, it's, at this point, it's very hard to say. But, uh, and this uh, is my opinion, this is not me uh, reporting anything factual. In my opinion, I see this as a reason to justify the surge in troops, which they've decided on uh, a long time ago, uh, because they need to the build up uh, in the region uh, for their uh, ongoing interest, let's say, with Iran. And uh, they're going to be using this uh, as a reason to move the troops in. So if we take my theory or my opinion on this, so so you're uh, thinking if that, then then the U.S. would have had to have been involved. Yes, but is, do I know that to be true? I don't. So you're thinking uh, will Robert Gates have asked for uh, I guess ten or twenty thousand more? You thinking that's not really uh, what's going on here? We're going to have a lot more than twenty thousand going there. I think we're going to start off with something, um, you know, something that's going to sound like this is temporary, to quell the, the uh, immediate up in violence. Um, but I think as time goes on, we're going to have to deploy more troops, because we're already engaged in Iran anyway. We're already doing extensive covert operations um, and funding uh, dissident groups or who we believe are dissident groups. Um, there is no question in my mind uh, that uh, we're going to end up seeing a lot more people going over than the, the 20,000. But, you know, this all can change at the, you know, at when. 
But these guys have no intention of pulling out. They never did. Uh, Iran was always the goal. And uh, Iraq was meant to be what Afghanistan, uh, how did that happen? You know, it was supposed to be sort of a drive-by war on the way to Iran. Uh, Larissa, I know you wrote about uh, the uh, clean break and the uh, new American century and also the papers that was um, published, a strategy for Israel in the 1980s. Is this, right. I mean, is what we're witnessing is, is a scene out of that script? Well, you know, I'll tell you, I've talked to people uh, extensively who were signatories, and what they envisioned and what's playing out here, uh, it's not so much that they, it doesn't, let me, let me start that again. What they saw in their mind was a vision of uh, uh, controlling certain interests in the region, and one sense is playing out. On the other hand, it's not playing out in any way that the people I've talked to have supported. Uh, in fact, uh, many of the neocons have dropped completely out and said, I have no support for this. This is not what I had envisioned. This is not how I had envisioned it happening. And um, what I think is happening is that initially you had the intelligentsia, the, the, the neocon intelligentsia and the corporatists in one vision, and the intellectuals uh, did not like what they were seeing, and they walked away. And what you're now left with are the uh, corporatists, the Dick Cheney's, the um, David Addington's, the, um, uh, the Wormsers, those kinds of people who, still, who are more interested in uh, power and profit than they are in ideology. The ideologues are gone. So, uh, did I answer your question? I know I yeah, yes, you lot. did. But, but you know what? I have, I have, a, I have a question, uh, which is, you know, everyone who participated in this study uh, group, uh, as far as like the New American Century or the, uh, 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 the clean break, uh, their names are out there except Jeb Bush. And Jeb Bush was involved in, in those studies. Do you know anything about that? Well, he was, no, 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 he was a signatory. Uh, a lot of these guys signed a, a, a paper. Uh, they signed a... a um, but, I mean, a, signing a, signing on something, you are agreeing to it, right? Well, it's a statement of principles, correct. But did any of those people, did they all agree on this particular vision or how the vision would be acted out? Like, uh, Brzezinski thinks this is absolutely outrageous, he, and he's the one who wrote the grand check for it. He's lost his mind over this. He said, this is crazy. This is uh, illegal. It's dishonest. Uh, so it, they may have not all uh, known all the specifics. They agreed on a general vision. And I understand. I found but, Larissa, my, 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 the point I want to make here is this took place with Jim Bush getting involved in it before George Bush became president. Right. That's correct. That's absolutely so, correct. So the powers that are working on this, actually they are also working on who's going to play what role, and that's why they brought George Bush in. Well, I think what was supposed to happen, is, you know, frankly, is that Jeb Bush was supposed to be president, and I think he was building up his, uh, uh, you know, war chest of uh, the contacts and supporters in the far right, uh, but uh, certain scandals uh, in his business dealings took him out of the, the race, so they stuck in his brother. I think uh, Jeb Bush is uh, essentially, uh, he's more on the corporatist side, but I really believe this ship is being, uh, is no longer in Bush territory. The, the, the father, the, the first President Bush, uh, is, is outraged, and he has been... Um, very reluctant to publicly criticize his son. Yeah. But I know people close to him, and he is very upset. The fact that Baker stepped in was implied. Okay. You know, I mean, it's like a public humiliation for his son. The fact that Baker and those guys stepped in would suggest that uh, this is no longer a Bush operation or even a neoconservative operation. This thing has gone on its own uh, completely. Okay. Well, I, I guess Jeb uh, was... Uh smarter than the, what they wanted, smarter than the requirements have uh, asked for. <laughs> uh, tell you what, uh, Larissa, yeah, stay with me. I'm sorry? Stay with me. We're going to go to the phones. We have some people waiting. Uh, Joseph, okay. go ahead, Joseph. This is Joseph. Okay, go ahead. Yes, 
Yes. Uh, I, uh, first of all, I'd like to compliment you on your on your program. Your your program is very very interesting. Thank you. Uh, dealing um, dealing with the matters uh, in uh, in Iraq, I do feel to believe um, uh, that it was a higher decision from uh, from America uh, in the process of dealing with Saddam. Um, okay. uh, one thing that is good that you a uh, higher decision than America. What do you mean? Forget what type of dictator that he was, but okay. do we have the right? Uh, jo I mean, Joseph, what do you mean higher decision than America? Yeah, I don't understand either. Uh, I mean that uh, uh, Iraq is occupied right. by, 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 by America. By Americans, right. Okay, so so therefore, uh, that's, uh, that was their decision to assassinate that man that day to, to make a statement of their power. Uh, who's they? Uh, the government, the uh, politicians. Uh, the politicians were here or over there? No, the politicians... Uh, the, the, the here. The here. Uh -huh. Here. Okay, so it was it was an American decision to kill him. He, well, uh, well. Also, never forget he had it coming to him because this man here murdered a lot of innocent people. Okay. 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 Uh, so eventually, it, uh, what goes around comes around. Right. That's the moral of that story. Right. Very, very clear. So Thanks. You don't believe in justice. You Thanks don't for the comment. In a legal system. Uh, now, uh, Larissa, wh what do you think of that? People say, okay, you know, he murdered people, he went through a court system, and uh, he found guilty, and they killed him. What's wrong with that? Well, so let's, let's be frank here. We know that Saddam Hussein murdered many people using chemical weapons, but that's not what he was convicted of. He was convicted of uh, killing 148 people in a town where, in fact, they had attempted to assassinate him over 25 years ago. Now, to me, that's a problem, because why wasn't he tried on, really, his extensive human rights violations and torture and all of this stuff? And, you know, th there's a reason for that. We, we did not allow that evidence into the court. And because of that, you can't say this trial was honest. You can't say the trial was fair to the truth, not necessarily to Saddam, but even fair to the truth. So when you have a trial where the evidence is controlled by the occupying force, um, I wouldn't say he, you know, that in any way this was justice. This was certainly revenge. It was certainly a political uh, execution. But you couldn't say it was legally or ethically. And, and also, it's against international law too to uh, exactly, for, exactly. for an occupation force. Uh, Larissa, unfortunately, that's all the time I have. But I want to bring you back in the next uh, few weeks for a whole hour, so we can discuss uh, uh, the Middle East in depth. Sure. Thank you for having me. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have uh, 15 uh, minutes left in the uh, in the first hour. And uh, in the second hour, we're going to have more guests. Uh, we have 11 minutes, so let's go ahead and get uh, Dr. Ashraf Abbasi uh, very quick so we can give him uh, enough time to uh, make a statement. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you, have, you are used to uh, this show of basically being frank and wanting to give you, and we will dig in every corner and under every rock out there to, uh, to bring you the truth. You know, a lot of you think, like uh, Joseph had stated, well, this man murdered a lot of people. That's fine, but uh, should you take the law into your own hands and decide when someone uh, is to die without running him through the court system? Now, remember, the court system that it's a court, number one, is a government that we set up. It's not a government, and of course, you know, you've seen the Iraqis with their ink-dipped uh, fingers and, uh, you know, voted and all that stuff that was just a, a bunch of BS and everyone knew it because the people who were on these lists are people who were approved by the occupation and the occupation government and the occupation force, which is the United States Army. And also the court that we have uh, as Americans, the, the court that the uh, American government has set up there, is basically, you know, the judge is a Kurd, which means he hates Saddam, so right away, that judge should have recused himself, right away. Now, incidentally, the judge, at one time, he was 
in for life. He was in prison for life. And uh, Saddam is the one. And I don't know if he was um, indicted and to be executed. But Saddam was the one to actually uh, uh, pardon him. And uh, it's, it's amazing that the, the, the person that Saddam pardoned at one time, 20 years back, was the one to actually, uh, say, kill him. But, you know, how could you put a judge that is known, well known to everyone, that he is the enemy of the man on the stand? How could that happen? And then another judge, because it was like two, three judges, another judge, because he was lenient with Saddam, he had to get him out and bring one who was basically very harsh with Saddam. His attorneys were not allowed to bring their witnesses. His attorneys were not allowed uh, to bring evidence. And like you uh, have heard, you know, this incident that they killed him on, this man was the president of the country, and there was an assassination attempt on his life. They brought these people to court, and the court system that was present at that time, and that was legally and internationally accepted, very much has accepted the, uh, uh, the law at that time. So that's what this president was killed for. He didn't kill these people himself. Just imagine, imagine ladies and gentlemen, imagine what would happen to George Bush for killing 650,000 Iraqis. That's a good question, but with that we go into Ashraf Abbasi, the chairman of the Pakistani American Congress. So welcome uh, back to the show, Ashraf. Uh, Dr. Tadavi, good evening to you and your uh, audience, and uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, it's truly a treat and honor and pleasure to be on your inspiring show for the third time. Thank you. Let me take this opportunity to commend your dedication and compliment your program and commend your commitment and uncommon courage in bringing the truth before the American people. Thank really, you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abbasi. To the American audio. Thank you. Tell me, uh, uh, with the time that we have left, which is about like nine or eight minutes, tell me what, why Saddam had to die when he died. Uh, Dr. Talavi, this is uh, so disturbing that uh, the way the execution took place is so, was so gross, inhuman, and pathetic. Executing a Muslim in a Muslim country on the eBay is totally unthinkable and mockery of the Islamic teachings. It makes me really, you know, sick to my stomach to watch this whole fiasco and had a sleepless night. I think the the Maliki's government has already lost its credibility. The way they, they rushed to Saddam's hanging, and they, the Shia uh, uh, gangs of Saddam, the, the way they, they ridiculed this man who was the leader of the Arab world, and they chanted his death, which is totally against the Islamic tenets. I think the Eagle Adha, as you know, it is the most sacred day for Muslims. It is the day of pilgrimage, it is the day of sacrifice, it, it is the day of giving, it is the day of exemplary demonstration of mercy and compassion. On this day, the prisoner on the death row are pardoned. On this day, the enemies forgive each other's animosity and bury their differences and their, their conflicts. On this day, the Muslims cannot even think about that in a Muslim country, a Muslim man will be hanged and he will be bashed and ridiculed and chanted. You know, that, that is so ridiculous, you know. But I think that Saddam Hussein, as the whole world, even in American media, they, they, you know, sometimes they can say things contrary to the reality, that he really conducted himself. He, he looked like, you know, the man of dignity and honor. He demonstrated uncommon courage, you know, before his evident death, he was calm, composed, and very few you know, Muslims are lucky to get this, this privilege to pronounce uh, uh, Kalima Shahada at the you know, last uh, uh, word, and he did that. And also, it was so disturbing that these people, they, they, they you know, inflicted some very, very uncruel remarks to him. And even then, he, you know, said that, uh, you know, uh, 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 and, uh, 
Now let me let me ask you. Let me ask you something, uh, Dr. Abbasi. D does this? I mean, because the United States had control of Saddam, and if they really, the government of the United States, if they really want stability in Iraq, the, you you would think the last thing they will do is hand him over, or they probably did not hand him over. They probably ordered the whole thing. Why? We, you know, the United States government knew exactly that if you do it on Saturday, in that particular day, that there is no way on earth that you're going to have stability, not just in Iraq, but all over the Middle East. Why? Is that what we're after? Instability in the region? I, I think that uh, uh, Ms. Larissa, uh, I uh, agree with her comments, and I think she made this point. I think there is, there is a larger thing behind this, you know, because... There is the deployment of, uh, you know, the the uh, troops in in Iraq, and these troops are the build up is not for Iraq, it's for Iran. And at this time, by hanging Saddam on the eighth day to making Shia factions over there in Iraq, making them happy that look here, what you wanted, we you know gave it to you, so they can they can cut off their loyalties to Iranian Shia, Shias, you know, over there. That, that is, I think, what they, they, they have planned it, but it's not going to work that way, you know. And this is, this is shameful that America could have done it, you know, they could have stopped it that way. Even, even the execution was rushed, you know. It was, there were so many other, you know, legal things that could have been done. And on the top of it, the Iraqi constitution does not allow execution on the eighth day. Right, This is right. The, the new, new regime that America has created in Iraq, and they said they're going to be a regime where there are going to be a law and order, and there are going to be supremacy of law. And in the very first day this regime has failed, there is no law and order. There is no supremacy of law. There is a law of the gangsters. There is a law of those Muqtadars, you know, the militia, you know. Now, so let, let, me ask you so, let me ask you something very quick. The president of Iraq, Jalal Talbani, who is a Kurd, a Sunni Kurd, and as a matter of fact, the Kurds, they did not want Saddam to be executed on that day because they still, they were not finished with him. Uh, uh, they, they, they had some charges against him and, and the, uh, the country, uh, I mean, he was supposed to go to court for those charges. Right. Uh, uh, do you think Jalal Talbani is, is just a figurehead there? Uh, he has no authority? I think Jalal Talbani, he is a she-man. So far, he has not shown that he is a real man. And, and I think that if you uh, uh, have heard the last word uh, of uh, uh, Saddam Hussein on his, uh, uh, you know, when he was being hanged, when these people were chanting, Muqtada, Muqtada, Muqtada. Yes. And, you know, Saddam Hussein replied to me, he said, you know, contemptuously, he said, Muqtada, is this how real men behave. Right. I mean, even on the, on the, on the, you know, the guy who is, is going to be dying in next second, that guy made really a very good remark and very solid remark on those cheerleaders that is this how a real men behave? They are not real men. They, okay. they are just stooges. Okay. Dr. Abbasi, unfortunately, uh, I just wanted you to come in briefly because we are completely out of time now. I appreciate you coming on, and hopefully we'll have you back here soon. Enjoy your program whenever, you know. Thank you. Uh, it is, and you are doing a wonderful job. God bless you. And thank you, thank you for having me on. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in the next hour, we Please still have a lot more people to bring to number followed to, uh, by the bring to you. And um, we, uh, we will have uh, Dahar Jamil in the next hour, uh, Mark Glenn and Judy Andreas. So uh, don't miss the... Uh, uh, the second hour, we will dig deeper into exactly what's going on in Iraq and what does this all mean uh, to us as Americans and to the Middle East. Uh, where is this world is headed to? Have we seen the wars yet? Or is this just the beginning? We will be back in five minutes. See you.